I'm Carol Alexander, author of Pricing, Hedging and Trading Financial Instruments, which is Volume 3 of the Market Risk Analysis series. Of the many textbooks in Market Risk Analysis, there are so many books on value at risk that one tends to forget that a large part of the day-to-day -day job of a market risk manager is to hedge risks. Indeed, the primary function of an investment bank is to accept risks because they should know how to hedge them. But in order to hedge risks properly, you need to understand how to price some very complex financial products. This book is divided into five very long chapters. The first is on bonds and swaps, the valuation, analysis, and of course, hedging. The second is on futures and forwards, the markets, the no arbitrage valuation, basis risk, and hedging. The next two chapters are the longest in the book, chapter three on options and chapter four on volatility. Both are nearly 100 pages long. Chapter three begins with the basic risk-neutral valuation principles, including a fair amount of stochastic calculus. Then I cover trading strategies, the Black-Scholes model, and a lot of hedging in that framework. Throughout the chapter, I remain in the Black-Scholes setting. So even when I move on to providing pricing formulae for about a dozen different exotic options, I remain in a constant volatility world. As always in chapter three, all the formulae are illustrated with interactive Excel spreadsheets, including the exotic option pricing formulae. Chapter four on volatility begins by introducing the implied volatility surface and the local volatility surface. These two surfaces are associated with any set of standard European option prices, whether they're market prices or model prices. But the implied volatility surface only exists in the contexts of such instruments, whereas the local volatility surface is not instrument specific. I focus on the dynamics of these two surfaces and the implications for hedging. I show that all options on tradable assets need to be priced using scale invariant models and that all scale invariant models have the same price hedge ratios. Thus, whether you use a Heston model or a sticky delta local volatility model, your delta and gamma are the same. It's only when you move to minimum variance hedging that the hedge ratios can be different. The final chapter on mapping portfolios provides essential background for volume four of the series, which is value at risk models. I show how to map different types of portfolios, portfolios of interest rate sensitive instruments, equities, commodities, options, and so forth. The scope of the book is very comprehensive because I begin at the very basics. For example, the difference between discreetly and continuously compounded interest rates, or how to find the present value of a bond but I move on to some very complex subjects, particularly in the chapter on volatility. The pricing, hedging and trading of financial instruments is a vast subject. So to cover so much in one volume, I've had to be very concise. That's why there are so many cross-references to the other books in the series. One of the key differences between this and other textbooks on financial instruments is that the CD-ROM contains a practical implementation of virtually every concept. So whenever possible, mathematical formulae are in an interactive Excel spreadsheet. And if that's not possible, then MATLAB code has been provided. This book fills a gap in the market by providing an accessible educational tool for readers with a financial background or a mathematical background, but they don't need to have both. 